During a 20-year playing career, Bradman consistently scored at a level that made him, in the words of former Australia captain Bill Woodfall, worth three batsmen to Australia. A controversial set of tactics, known as body line, was specially devised by the England team to curb his scoring. As a captain and administrator, Bradman was committed to attacking, entertaining cricket, he drew spectators in record numbers. He hated the constant adulation, however, and it affected how he dealt with others. The focus of attention on his individual performances, strained relationships with some teammates, administrators, and journalists, who thought him aloof and wary. Following an enforced hiatus due to the Second World War, he made a dramatic comeback captaining an Australian team known as the Invincibles on a record-breaking unbeaten tour of England. A complex, highly driven man, not given to close personal relationships, Bradman retained a preeminent position in the game by acting as an administrator, selector, and writer for three decades following his retirement. Even after he became reclusive in his declining years, his opinion was highly sought, and his status as a national icon was still recognized. Almost 50 years after his retirement as a test player, in 1997, Prime Minister John Howard of Australia called him the greatest living Australian. Point Bradman's image has appeared on postage stamps and coins, and a museum dedicated to his life was opened while he was still living. On the centenary of his birth, the 27th of August 2008, the Royal Australian Mint issued a $5 commemorative gold coin with Bradman's image. In 2009, he was inducted posthumously into the ICC Cricket Hall of Fame. During the 1920-21 season, Bradman acted as scorer for the local Boral team, captained by his uncle George Watman. In October 1920, he filled in when the team was one man short, scoring 37 not out and 29 not out on debut. During the season, Bradman's father took him to the Sydney Cricket Ground to watch the fifth Ashes test match. On that day, Bradman formed an ambition. I shall never be satisfied, he told his father, until I play on this ground. Bradman left school in 1922 and went to work for a local real estate agent who encouraged his sporting pursuits by giving him time off when necessary. He gave up cricket in favor of tennis for two years, but resumed playing cricket in 1925 to 26. Bradman became a regular selection for the Boral team. Several outstanding performances earned him the attention of the Sydney Daily Press. Competing on matting over concrete pitches, Boral played other rural towns in the Berrima district competition. Against Wingello, a team that included the future test bowler Bill O'Reilly, Bradman made 234. In the competition final against Mossvale, which extended over five consecutive Saturdays, Bradman scored 320 not out. During the following Australian winter, an aging Australian team lost the Ashes in England, and a number of test players retired. The New South Wales Cricket Association began a hunt for new talent. Mindful of Bradman's big scores for Boral, the association wrote to him, requesting his attendance at a practice session in Sydney. He was subsequently chosen for the country week tournaments at both cricket and tennis, to be played during separate weeks. His boss presented him with an ultimatum. He could have only one week away from work and therefore had to choose between the two sports. He chose cricket. Bradman's performances during country week resulted in an invitation to play great cricket in Sydney for St George in the 1926-27 season. He scored 110 on his debut, making his first century on a turf pitch. On the 1st of January 1927, he turned out for the NSW second team. For the remainder of the season, Bradman travelled the 130 kilometres from Boral to Sydney every Saturday to play for St George. Please subscribe my YouTube channel.